Hello everyone. Welcome to Pune Times Mirror. Today we are going to have an exclusive conversation with none other than Baba Saheb Kalyani, owner, chairman and managing director of Bharat Forge. Welcome sir. It's been a great honor to have you here with us today. Thank you. So sir first of all uh, the journey of Bharat Forge has been remarkable over the past 6 and a half decades. So firstly everyone would like to know to your thoughts and insights about the strategic decision making process that led bharat forge to in the defense and electric vehicle sector you know in in uh, every business and every industry as you evolve with time you have to learn to transform your business based on the technologies that are transforming products and transforming the way you do things So if you look at our business uh, I joined this company in 1972 so it's almost 52 years ago and I have seen uh, this is our fourth transformation so when we started in 19 uh, when I started in 1972 this company was just about 5 uh, 6 crores in revenue okay small company and uh, today it's almost uh, reaching close to uh 18 20000 crores and with global operations all over the world we have factories in europe in the united states mm-hmm. and of course we are in various different industries so the transform the first if you take the first 10 years uh the 70s the 70s were basically a business that was largely driven with muscle power mm-hmm. and we were making everything to somebody's specification somebody gave us a drawing somebody told us this is what is required to be done and that is how we were doing it okay in the 80s we started our first transformation of getting into some design engineering so that we could add some value to our customers mm-hmm. the third transformation happened in the 90s when we changed our entire manufacturing from using muscle power to brain power so we introduce automation we introduce robotics we uh, you know everything whatever we were doing manually became automated so that is the third transformation the fourth transformation that is happening now is uh, we call this bharat force 2.0 so we are now moving from a, a company that used to make only components and parts to making products Okay. So when we looked at the, what products we need to make, uh, clearly, if you look at the big picture uh, that is happening in the country, Honorable Prime Minister's call for Atmanirbhar Bharat, you know, this whole defence manufacturing, mm-hmm. uh, and defence manufacturing is a metallurgical industry. You can't get make guns and uh, those kind of products unless you know uh, material technology, metallurgical technology. Now we are almost number one in the world in material technology and metallurgical technology mm-hmm. because we supply to almost everybody in the world these components that have so much of uh, metallurgy knowledge. In it. So it was a very natural transition for us to say, you know, that's one area we should look at. So it started in 2011. Okay. Uh, this whole journey towards defense. I mean, before 2011. uh we were not in this business we started in 2011 and uh, you know we just kind of progressed we started with uh, making uh we made our first artillery gun in 2012 but in in india nobody took us seriously they they all thought it's a uh, some piece of junk we put together mm-hmm. but it's only when we got prime minister modi coming in and <coughs> putting a make in india policy and bringing in this whole concept of atmanirbhar bharat and then the late uh, defense minister mr manohar parikar he was the one who really changed the mm-hmm. rules of the game allowed private sector to come in mm-hmm. into this whole defense manufacturing and he is the one who gave us a lot of encouragement okay and so uh, you know in 10 years uh, we had half developed almost nine artillery platforms our own design mm-hmm. a uh, one design is uh, with the help of DRDO which is the ATX but the uh, remaining eight are our own so we have developed a very deep knowledge of 
uh, this technology, both in terms of designing, engineering, and manufacturing. We have to make everything here, mm-hmm. including uh, our, our all our artillery guns are almost uh, software driven. So we are able to make all the electronics, the gun control computers, uh, the software that is required for that. It's a very sophisticated equipment. Uh, uh, what we do. Yeah. So we developed that uh, all those technologies, and as we were developing these technologies, you know the whole electronic software capability that so we started using it in other areas, mm-hmm. other defense products. Okay. Uh, so we, apart from guns, we make armored vehicles. Uh, okay. Our Kalyani M4 has become very popular in the Indian Army. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, very popular uh, outside. We export a lot. We export artillery guns today. In India, you know, for 75 years, we couldn't make our own guns. But now we export artillery mm-hmm. to okay. Europe. And that that's going to increase dramatically. Mm-hmm. Then we make ammunition, right. yeah. which we also export. Mm-hmm. Uh, we make uh, unmanned systems for land, uh, for air, UAVs, and for underwater. Yeah. Okay. That's really great, sir. Now, sir, uh, I would like to talk about uh, the uh, CSR funds part. Like Bharat Force has been actively contributing to CSR funds. So we w- we all would like to know what drives this commitment and how do you see the impact of such kind of initiatives? We do CSR uh, as uh, CSR as mm-hmm. something that uh, you know is ingrained kind of in our DNA. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, in terms of helping the society, society and helping people outside. Okay. So we have taken 100 villages mm-hmm. uh, where we do CSR work and uh, it's quite remarkable what we have been able to achieve in these 100 villages. You know, we do everything very uh, systematically with a, uh, with a basic uh, database. Yeah. So we go into a village, we find out what is the current uh, data of the village, what is their household income, uh, you know, what is their uh, uh, water situation, education situation, are there good schools, is there water available, clean water available, is there drainage, are there roads, what do people do? And then we draw up a map, a road map, with the people in the village together with them, mm-hmm. where we say, okay, In three years, we must double their household income. In five years, we must quadruple their household income. And in 10 years, we must make their household income 10 times of what it is. Okay. So, and we we do this by doing some very simple things. First, we provide drinking water to the house. We build toilets. We build schools, Mm -hmm. if there are no schools. Okay. Uh, We build roads so that transportation is easy and then everything works because uh, you know people in the village once they have water once they have all this then their agriculture they're mainly doing uh, farming uh, growing fruits or growing some uh, products then their whole output goes up and if the output goes up income goes up Mm-hmm. So we are working in 100 villages and all these 100 villages are villages which have drought. So we don't work in villages where everything is available. These are all drought village, drought prone villages and you can go and see the villages. You will be amazed to see the transformation. Now we have taken one more uh, project. How do we convert these villages to sustainable villages, green villages? so that they don't have to get any energy from outside. They don't have to throw anything outside. Everything is recycled, everything is reused, and you create a sustainable way of living. And the reason I reason we are we do this is because I grew up in a village. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I grew up in a small village uh, in my childhood childhood where there, there was no electricity, we had uh, cow sheds where we had cows and buffaloes. So I have lived that life. How Bharat Force leverages AI and machine learning technologies in its manufacturing processes? See, first of all, AI, uh, machine learning, this is all a new direction of technology. I mean, in tomorrow's world, 
I mean, first of all, there are three things that you need to do in tomorrow's world as far as manufacturing is concerned. You need to have uh, IoT, so you need to have Industry 4.0 in your manufacturing. Now, we did this five years ago. Our entire plant here runs with Industry 4.0. Okay, and it, uh, we developed our own processes. We, we trained almost 3,000 people uh, in our plant how to use Industry 4.0 techniques. So it works on Industry 4.0. The next step is uh, digitalization. You have to digitalize everything because you cannot do data uh, analogously. Okay, I can't use paper and print and all that. Kind. Everything has to be digital. So once you do industry 4.0 and digitalization, then you bring in AI and machine learning and all those other technologies. Actually, the real technology that will come out of AI is called the large language model technology. And that is what we are creating here. We are creating this whole large language model technology using AI which will be used for our manufacturing. Not only ours, we can probably create, convert that into a separate business tomorrow and, and uh, create a different solutions business for our customers and for everybody. So today we, you know, for example, if you go to our shop floor, you will not find paper because nobody uses paper anymore. Everything is on a tablet or uh, on the, on the computer screens or things like that. So this is the first phase of transformation. The second phase of transformation mm -hmm. will now become, you convert all this to digital technology. Okay. We are only on IoT today. Now you make everything digital. Digital means everything is live. You can watch every second what is happening in your factory. You can watch, uh, uh, you know, what every person is doing. Mm -hmm. uh, you can make out if, uh, things are going right. Yeah. You can have uh, uh, cameras that that can check the quality of the product that you are making. If some wrong product is being made, it can be identified uh, right up, up in the beginning instead of trying to find out after you have made the product. So all this is going to happen uh, with the use of uh, AI, machine learning, digital transformation. And that's where we are in today. We are in this transformative phase. Hmm. So we have, we have set up a AI center, AI digital center, yeah. and uh, you can have a look at it. With that center, we can control our factories in the, in the United States, in Germany, for sitting here. Oh. Live. Wow. Live means uh, every second or every hour, what is going on. So it is, it is an extremely powerful uh, uh, tool uh, to do things, but it requires you have to develop that know, that knowledge, that know-how. You have to develop people who understand that knowledge. See, at the end of the day, people are not going to disappear. People are going to do more intelligent work, okay, and less uh, manual work. Mm -hmm. right. That's true. Absolutely. We are, and our next step will be into advanced robotics. Mm -hmm. Because with AI machine learning, you also need automation. So we are going to start manufacturing advanced robotics here in our plant. Oh, indeed. Okay, sir. That's really nice. So next, I would like to ask you, uh, what strategy should be adopted to encourage research and development in the manufacturing sector and especially in emerging technologies like AI, robotics, machine learning, etc.? <laughs> Well, everybody has to invest in uh, R&D because without that, uh, I don't know how you can make progress. Mm -hmm. You know, with technology is changing. See, in the old days, when the first industrial revolution took place, yeah. uh, it happened because the steam engine was invented by the British. Yeah. And that was the first industrial revolution. Then came the second industrial revolution uh, when motor cars were... Uh, when Ford made its first uh, mass-produced car in the early 1900s. Right. Okay, if you, there's a very famous picture of uh, New York City, Manhattan. Mm -hmm. In uh, 1903, Manhattan was full of horse carriages. In 1910, it was only full of cars. Okay, that dramatic change happened. That was the second industrial revolution that came in. 
First was the railroads with steam engines, then became cars where the uh, diesel and petrol engines were invented. Then the third industrial revolution happened with the generation of electronics. And now the current industrial revolution and between the first industrial revolution and the third industrial revolution, it took us 70 years. But now the industrial revolutions will happen every five years. Because the technologies are changing so fast. Yeah. The velocity of technology change is extremely fast. So you have to uh, get your talent base, your uh, people base also to that level. Right. And that speed, otherwise you will be behind. And in this world, once you are behind, it's very difficult to catch up. So you actually need to be ahead, you know, five, ten years ahead of uh, at least your customers in terms of uh, how you can serve them. Absolutely. That's really right, sir. So uh, now, sir, I would like you to highlight the symbolic relationship between Bharat Forge and its contribution in the growth and development of Maharashtra. Well, we are largely in Maharashtra. I mean, uh, for Bharat Forge, I think all its factories are here. <coughs> we have around Pune, five, six plants. Uh, yeah. We have a plant in Satara. Mm -hmm. Now we are setting up our big defense factory in Jizuri. It will be inaugurated next month. Okay. Where we will make uh, guns, uh, armored vehicles, we will make tanks, uh, and all kinds of things. A lot of products. Yeah. Okay. So uh, we are we are basically in Maharashtra. Mm -hmm. At least as far as this company is concerned. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So you know the one good thing in 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 Maharashtra, especially Pune, is we have tremendous ecosystem for getting talent yeah. with the number of universities, colleges, good schools, uh, a fantastic ecosystem uh, mm -hmm. to get talent. That is the beauty of Pune and why people get attracted to this city. Absolutely. If we, if we are able to improve the infrastructure in this city and make the roads less congested and a little better, the city can even become uh, more fantastic. Absolutely. So, uh, next, sir, I would uh, like you to uh, provide an overview of Bharat Forge's entire vision and strategic goals for the next decade. Well, we are, you know, as I said, we are now in our uh, fourth uh, 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 step of change. Yeah. And we call it Bharat Forge 2.0. Mm -hmm. So, we have. Uh, created now five businesses. We used to have one business making components. Mm -hmm. That business is still there and it's growing. Yeah. We are now the largest supplier of components to every car, truck in the world. Yeah. You can't buy anything without a Bharat Forge part in it. Yeah. Whether it's a Mercedes, whether it's an Audi, or whether it's a Volvo, whatever, General Motors, cars, uh, we supply to all of them. Uh, the four other business verticals we have made, one is defense. Mm -hmm. So in defense itself, we have something like uh, 10 verticals now. Okay. Artillery gun is one. We have small arms. We have uh, 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 UGVs, unmanned vehicles. We have armored vehicles. Mm -hmm. We have uh, uh, FIC, that is tracked vehicles. Okay. And we will uh, next step will be to make main battle tanks. Then we have uh, 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 our naval domain, undersea, mm -hmm. on uh, on ships. We make uh, start making guns for navy on the for the ships, big ships. So we are doing a lot of things. We make parts for air force. Yeah. So we work in all these areas. Where we have multiple products, multiple uh, domains. The only good thing about this is all this, unlike other people, this is something that we design and create ourselves. So we own the intellectual property. That's why we are the only company that is able to export. Absolutely. Because if you don't own it, intellectual property, if you got it from somebody else, that guy won't allow you to export. We are involved with space. We make a lot of products for ISRO. Yeah. Yeah. We are in every business, oil and gas, mm -hmm. you know, construction, <clears throat> mining, 
everything. We make uh, jet engine blades for Rolls Royce uh, and export it to them uh, in the UK. So we, we, we only do high technology products. We don't do any commodity products here. Mm. Okay. That's right. Sir. So uh, next, sir, I would like to know how can India enhance its manufacturing capabilities while ensuring environmental sustainability and resource efficiency? Okay. Good question. I think it's probably the most important thing that India needs to do. Yeah. I'll tell you what we are doing. Mm -hmm. first and then I will tell you what uh, the country needs to do. Yeah. What we have done is two years ago uh, we decided that we need to take this entire ESG exercise very seriously. Mm -hmm. So first we said uh, we, we have our own steel plant here uh, which is another company mm -hmm. which is right located right next to Okay. So we are the first company in the world, the steel plant is the first steel plant in the world mm -hmm. to make green steel. Okay, everybody talks about green steel. We are the only ones in the world who are making green steel today. Certified by TUV in Germany, of course certified by our steel ministry, uh, government of India and everybody. So we first created the whole process of how to make green steel. Now with the green steel, you take Bharat Forge for example, if we use green steel, all our energy that we use today, electrical energy, only comes from renewable sources. So we have something like 150 megawatts of renewable energy okay. that we use. We still have some more, we don't, we have zero discharge of waste. So we don't, we recycle everything here. So these are the kind of things you have to do to make a sustainable manufacture. We still have many steps to take. Yeah. This is only the beginning. But we are way ahead of anybody else in this. Absolutely. As far as the country is concerned, mm -hmm. today our manufacturing output in this country is roughly about 16% of our GDP. Yeah. So if you say our GDP is 3.7 trillion or 3.8 trillion or something like that, of even 4 trillion. Mm -hmm. Your manufacturing output, 16% will come to 640 billion. Yeah. It is too little mm -hmm. for a country of our size. Our manufacturing output, if the Prime Minister's target of Amrutkal 2047 is to take this country to a 30 trillion uh, uh, GDP. Yeah. So in that 30 trillion GDP, manufacturing should at least contribute 20 to 25 percent. So, if you take 20 percent, then it has to be 6 trillion. That means it has to be 10 times of what it is today. And that also in 25 years. Hmm. In 75 years, we have come to 600 billion. Assuming that uh, in 1947, it was almost nothing, zero. It was a small amount, but almost next to nothing. So, what we have done in 75 years, we have to do 10 times of that in 25 years. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's a, it's a big challenge, mm -hmm. also a big opportunity yeah. for India as a country, for everybody. And a lot of this will be done by uh, the medium and small scale industry partners. Yeah. They have big opportunity to grow in this business because no company can just do everything itself. They need, uh, you know, the help of these techno interpreters who bring their own knowledge, mm -hmm. who bring their own skills into the game. Yeah. So this is what India needs to do, and it, it needs to do in every sector. They, 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 you know, I mean, there are so many sectors where we are almost at zero level. If you look at healthcare. You know, we are very low in the healthcare in terms of making any equipments that are required for healthcare and all that. We hardly make anything here. Even in agriculture, uh, our technology levels are very, very low. They can dramatically improve. Now, a lot of work is going on in agriculture in using drones and using uh, satellite uh, images, etc to improve agriculture and agricultural productivity. So every area you're going to see a lot of activity. Yeah. 
otherwise getting to 30 trillion dollars is not a joke True. and will not happen by itself absolutely so uh, next sir uh, uh, and, like and it has to happen sustainability wise yeah if you don't do that we will completely destroy our environment mm. and then uh, we will never be able to achieve these goals because if the if the effects of climate change become drastic on india then we will have more problems than we can solve absolutely sir so uh, next i would like to know what strategies should be adopted you know uh, in uh, manufacturing growth and how it should be inclusive benefiting to all sections of the society including the mar- marginalized communities well <coughs> you know in the industry needs to focus on what it's doing mm-hmm. okay everybody can't do everything Now, if, if industry grows and it, the economy grows, yeah. then everybody in the society will benefit from it, including the marginalized community. Everybody will benefit. And if you do it in a sustainable way, that without harming the environment, without harming nature, then it will be beneficial for all. Yeah. I'll give you one simple example of our CSR work. Mm-hmm. there is a uh, there is a village in uh, a remote area of uh, nagar district okay uh, which is full of tribals is in a little hilly area okay hardly anybody goes there so there are some five wadis there and they are all tribals and before we went there uh, to do some work we had done a study of what these uh, people do so every day in the morning a truck would come two three trucks and this couple of 100 people will sit in the truck and they will go somewhere as laborers work somewhere in the evening they come back and then they drink and you know the women have to work all day this was their lifestyle mm. so we we did a simple thing after analyzing this there was a lot of land around in that hilly area we got a bulldozer we leveled some land some 20 30 acres of land then we plowed it and we taught them how to plant potato seeds that was just a start you can you can plant anything when the f- first crop came out and they saw the potatoes coming out you know I mean I have videos of this people had tears those villagers had tears in their eyes and they had never seen that they could do something other than labor work and their whole lifestyle has changed now they are now growing crop they are you know the family is better the kids are the kids have a school this is this is the kind of things you have to do mm-hmm. and this is you know a little bit of uh, work efforts knowledge that is what is required to be transferred yes and a lot of people are doing it not only i am doing it uh, many many people are doing this mm-hmm. absolutely yes sir. so that's it sir on behalf of the entire pune times mewa team i would like to thank you for taking out your precious time for us and also sharing your valuable insights about everything so there you have it folks that's it for today stay tuned for more updates and follow pune times mewa on social media this is shreyas wange from pune times mewa